Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery. A friend just asked me what is this thing that he called a false edge that runs along the spine of some knives. Now if this were a dagger shaped blade that was single edged where one side was sharpened and the other symmetric side was left blunt, that blunt edge would be called a false edge. But on a knife like this, this cutaway here is called a swedge. And it serves several different purposes. The first is purely aesthetic. It, it looks cool. Some people like the way it looks. I own a bunch of knives that have them, so I obviously do. But it adds a new kind of structure, line, some kind of angularity, just a defined shape. And on a knife like this, this is the Ostop Held Designed Wii Moat, that swedge really mirrors the kind of cutouts and angular geometric shaping of the rest of the handle. It just kind of fits right with this knife. But that's going to be an aesthetic preference. Some people will like that, some people won't. So let's instead focus on the functional impact of a swedge. The first thing it's going to do is thin out the blade. This part back here on the knife is called the flat, and it's the full thickness of the blade stock. On this knife it's 0.12, and as long as this flat extends forward, you can see from the reflection that it's coming to right about there, the knife is going to stay at that full thickness, 0.12. But a lot of swedges, not all, are angled downward, which means that they cut into the primary grind. By definition, the primary grind is thinner than the flat because the material has been removed. So the further you come down into that grind, the thinner the blade is going to get. So up here, we're at 0.12 all the way out to here, but this blade actually thins out down to 0.09. That's like a full 25% decrease just by coming down that swedge. And it means it's going to be easier to cut through dense materials up here, where this thinner, than it is back here. But it does leave you with the full thickness of the blade and all of the strength behind that if you need to push through something that's a little bit harder. Now on some knives, like this is the, uh, this is the uh, Pena X series Apache, by the way. Sometimes, like this Quiet Carry IQ, you can see that this swedge is not cutting down into this grind. It, the blade's thickness remains the full thickness all the way out to the edge. It's very thin on this knife. This is 0.086, but it doesn't thin out. So what the the swedge is doing on this knife is primarily reducing drag. You can see that as you push up something like this hollow grind, the, the material you're cutting is being split further and further apart. But once you get to this flat, you're no longer splitting the material wider apart, you're just running along the flat and adding friction into the system. As you can see, my finger is dragging along that material the entire way. But if I come up here to where the swedge is, that material has been cut out, and you can see there's nothing dragging along my finger at the top of the blade. The next thing, and I think this is probably one of the biggest, especially on knives that are taller, is that the swedge makes it easier to do a curved cut through a material. As you can see, if I try and twist the blade side to side, the kind of motion I would do in a curved cut, my finger is wedging against this top part of the spine. I can't turn it more than this before I hit into that spine. But if I come up here to the tip, I'm able to turn the knife significantly further until I now hit into this new spine that's all the way back there. It's a lot more able to turn around surfaces like that. The last thing that I find that swedges are useful for is kind of as a light duty pry tool because what it's doing is thinning out the knife to a relatively thin edge, especially on thin blade stock like this, but it's not actually sharp. I find this super useful for something like this where I want to get into a surface like here and I kind of want to wedge up and kind of wiggle this open, but I don't want to risk cutting it. I'm not literally going to cut open a Kleenex box, but this is an example of a type where cardboard's been glued together and packaging where I might want to kind of come in here and wedge in and pry like that without marring the surface with a cutting edge. In case you know, I want to return packaging, uh, return a product, I don't want to mar up the packaging. The main downside to a swedge, though, is that it does thin out this blade, which means that it can be less comfortable to push on it. Sometimes in a pinch cut, especially on knives like these sheep's foot edges, it's good to uh, want to be able to put your finger along the spine of the blade and push a lot of force behind your cut in your something like a utility cut. And on a knife like this, where it comes to a literal apex at the top, this isn't the most comfortable. It's a lot more comfortable to push on this flat surface than on this spine. But on a lot of knives, the swedge is not a full edge. And so you can see like on this one again, you have a flat surface. It's thinner, it's, it's less comfortable to push up here than back here, but it's still pretty good. And on some knives, like this Holt Haptic, you'll notice that the swedge is actually cut at an angle, which means the blade gets thin, but then thickens back out. This means that it's comfortable to push here, 
less comfortable to push here, but then fully comfortable to push right here again. So on a knife like this, you can put your finger right up there and still have the full thickness of the blade to pull. So this is the main benefits I see, but there's probably even other ones that I haven't talked about. So let me know in the comments if you know of other reasons why you love or why you hate having a swedge on a knife. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.